picture, which dates back to 2001, was published in a school yearbook while Justin Trudeau worked as a teacher. It was taken at the school's annual dinner, which had an Arabian Nights theme. Trudeau says it was a mistake and a dumb thing to do. He is facing a tough re-election fight as Canadians go to the poll on October the 21st. I attended an end-of-year gala where the theme was Arabian Nights. And I uh, dressed up in an Aladdin costume and put makeup on. I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better, but I didn't. And I'm really sorry. Stephen Chase is a national correspondent for the Globe and Mail newspaper and is covering the election campaign and joins us from the Canadian capital, Ottawa, on Skype. Good to have you on the program. So uh, as we are, uh, as we head, uh, head to those elections, to those polls, how much is this going to affect his chances or have any impact at all uh, as he uh, carries on with his campaigning? That's a good question. It's a bit of a bombshell that just exploded a few hours ago. And so it's created a, uh, a, a, a moment of political crisis for the, for the leader. Uh, and it, it sort of has basically uh, thrown his campaign uh, plans off track for the moment. This is a country of immigrants. We bring in uh, 300,000 immigrants every year, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, and what he, what he faces here is something that suggests he's not who he says he is. He has been um, a very politically correct leader who's a master of uh, of political correctness and of championing diversity and, and uh, also suggesting that his opponents are racists. Uh, so this this uh, instance uh, where he talked about um, this uh, this mis this most unfortunate uh, conduct, uh, this wasn't something that happened when he was a child or when he was a teenager or when he was in college. This is when he was 29 years old. So he's got it's a bit of a challenge to his brand and. Uh, Voters who are undecided, and there are a lot of undecided voters in this election, are, he's going to have to convince them that this is just a blip in his past and is not indicative of a more widespread sort of hypocrisy on his part. You say he's very politically correct, and that's always uh, given uh, the appearance of someone who is down the line straight and working for the people. But at the same time, his presidency has been clouded by allegations that he tried to pressure an attorney general to drop corruption charges against a big company, and there have been other foibles. How do the Canadian public view him now? Well, right now, he's running neck and neck with the lead, uh, the lead rival for the job, which is the conservative candidate, the conservative leader. Uh, he's got about the support of about 33 percent of the electorate, and the conservatives have the support of about another 30 percent of the electorate. And then uh, there's further sort of divisions after that. But, you know, he, he's... He's running neck and neck with the opposition, and there's no, not a, certainly not a majority of Canadians who support him. So uh, he's going to uh, have to convince them that uh, he's he's ready for another mandate, and that he's he is who he says he is. Um, as you as you know, pocketbook issues and the economy are always the the forefront of the of people's concerns. These are the type of the issues that may have. Um, may undermine his brand and also may undermine uh, the, his ability to reach out to undecided voters, who he certainly needs to put him over the top. And broadly speaking, how, how has he been viewed with regards to his sensitivity towards uh, racism issues or ethnicities? You say, you know, as you say, Canada is a land of immigrants. Has he, have people felt that he is representative of them? He has not, there's not been racist incidents from Mr. Trudeau in the past that we know of. Uh, he was uh, perhaps most famous for welcoming 30,000, 25,000 to 30,000 Syrian refugees early in his mandate. And he's made a big effort at inclusion in the party, bringing in various ethnic groups who form the sort of mosaic of Canada, bringing them into cabinet. So this is certainly something that goes against his brand and what people have come to expect. Stephen Chase from the Globe and Mail, good to speak to you. Thank you.